Hello guys and welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com. Today we'll be talking about Object Studio and Application Modeler. So um, last week we discussed uh, and we walked through a process studio and how a process studio diagram sort of looks like, you know, the different stages and stuff. So um, if you remember in the studio section we have the processes and the process uh, diagrams which we'll be creating in of course, subsequent blog posts, but we also have objects and uh, these objects reside in the area called Object Studio, right? And uh, we can create new objects here and simply provide the name, but let's open this trial one, right? So um, an Object Studio, uh, what it does is it has uh, what we call as the object diagrams. They look pretty much same as the process flow diagrams but uh, their main uh, motive is to interact with the external applications, right? So uh, whenever you'll be working with any, um, you know, uh, any external application for automation, you need to interact with its elements, like its buttons, text boxes, check boxes, um, you know, drop down menus and et cetera, et cetera. And you need to, you know, perform some actions on those elements and to perform and finally do the automation, right? So um, this is what uh, this is where the the canvas area where we do where we develop all these interactions and uh, we create the diagrams for it, right? So the stages are a little bit similar to what we had in the process flow diagram, but uh, definitely there are um, stages which are specific to Object Studio and to the process flow diagram as well. So. Um, in this object studio, we always have two pages, uh, two object, we call them actions, by the way. So these two actions, initialize and cleanup, they are always there by default. And initialize, what it will do is, it will, um, this initialize uh, action will be executed whenever any, any of the action, we might have like several actions in here, right? So whenever any action is, uh, is executed, like for the first time, right? Any action of a business object is being executed, then first the initialize would take place. So what we usually do is uh, in initialize uh, action, we put in like some global data variables, which we will be probably using again and again in other actions uh, that we'll be creating. And similarly, cleanup is like, you know, once all the actions have successfully executed, then in the end, uh, the cleanup action would be executed, which will sort of, you know, dynamically deallocate the memory and, uh, and all those cleanup actions that you, you know, uh, like restoring the values and stuff. So, uh, this is, um, like a high level of, we're, we're not too much concerned about initializing the cleanup, uh, but with the actions, right? So, um, same as before they have the start and end stages we can perform operations, which we'll be discussing in subsequent blog posts again, but like decision boxes, we're gonna have process stages, different pages we can interact with, the uh, navigation stage, which will perform operations on elements like click, press, uh, like clicking a button or pressing a button or uh, sending keystroke, like control, alt, delete or something like that. And then reading data from uh, from an ex from a target application, writing data onto target application like username, password. You're writing onto an application, uh, user ID and password field, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So um, and we'll of course be connecting them uh, one after the other, like you know using the link stage. So um, we'll discuss with the specific target application examples in uh, probably next week's blog post itself. Right. A few other things to, uh, before I jump onto application modeler, uh, I also want to mention that the actions or a object in general, um, cannot be executed independently. By this, what I mean is that you'll have to have a process which will, um, which will redirect, uh, itself to the object and then, uh, it will be executed. So. The processes like this one, you'll be using a, a stage called action. Uh, we'll discuss this in greater detail. So if you uh, are not able to follow up, that's okay. Because right now we are just here to walk through the object studio diagrams. But in the process studio, uh, what we'll do is we, 
choose the business object and we choose the corresponding action right like the page that we had and uh, subsequently that action is called and to execute it right so um, the object studio diagram will have all these different actions like uh, and it's better to uh, divide your complete automation operation into different different actions like like you should have a different action page for just logging into the application then um, a separate page to uh, a separate action to um, after logging in you may want to uh, input some data right like um, that you want to save so input data is a separate action saving could be a separate action so the more you divide your um, uh, operations that will be interacting with the target application uh, the more you will be dividing it into different actions the better it is uh, to to you know uh, to make it more uh, robust comprehensible for other people and uh, scalable and manageable as well right one uh, thing you should take care of uh, which, which you should have in mind is uh, that the object studio need, uh, the object diagrams need to be as scalable as possible you want to use them again and again rather than reworking it because processes right processes are different for each company but the underlying interactions with the target application they have to be similar they have to be pretty much the same so um like you can imagine that you know uh, writing into a word file right the writing operation is pretty much the same what you are writing might be different so we also have like pre configured objects which we are going to use in our uh, when we'll be doing the uh, bot development work but uh, um, you know these these objects are pre configured comes with the blue prism application itself and are reusable reusable right so um, that's one good thing and um, these actions are only available to the process once they have been published so you have to make sure that uh, an action is visible um, to the process to make it executable by the bot by publishing it so you can see this you know these three uh, cubes like color thingy here so this is what is going to make sure whether these uh, uh these actions are pub in published state or not right so um that's another good point to remember let's go to application modeler so application modeler is um, is that entity within the object studio where we identify the elements of the target application and we uh, perform operations uh, subsequently later right so um like we get a pretty neat wizard uh, an application model wizard so that we can uh, provide logical naming conventions to it adhering to our conventions of course uh, proper naming and uh, um alongside like uh, the location where the executable file will be within the local system to execute the application let's let's say um the application name is um, i don't know training order system right so you can provide a logical name like this hit next what sort of an application it is i have discussed these applications in detail in um, you know uh, in the blog post as well so if you haven't checked that out i highly recommend you do so it's always a good practice to go through the blog post first and then through the demo video that i that i mentioned here right you can find that in the description as well or if you're following the pro rp blog itself that's that's even better so let's say if it's a windows application you hit next and um, do you want to just simply attach to an existing uh, instance of uh, the application that means the application would already be running when we'll be executing the operations on it or whether we want to launch it from the beginning through through an exe file right so most of the cases we go with the executable file but of course uh, having it already being run is also not something which you can comp which you cannot comprehend so then you enter the executable file path or whatever it is right um let's say uh, it's in explorer or something right um i mean i don't want to start off with any browser automation of course right away because it will be really really confusing but um let's say it will be attached to an existing instance 
and uh, what the window title is going to be for the target application you can use the wildcards i've discussed this in ui path blog as well but wildcards are like you know uh like those special characters which may or may not exist uh, in a in a particular attribute in this case the window title and uh, helps in identifying the particular uh, target application in this case so something like that i'm just making this up right and the process name if you want to put the process name these process names can be found in control alt delete in the task manager you can find those uh, i don't want to put anything here just hit next 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 either ways right so once you get the application modeler screen in here you add the elements so to add the elements first you need to have the application instance attached to the blue prism program so what happens is uh, once you let's say launch the application we don't have an application right away but uh, in here once you've launched it you uh, you can attach to an existing application if it is already being uh, if it is already launched and um, you select the elements so by selecting the elements what you mean is like um, you want to select a particular field where you want to do the typing operation right so in the element next time once the once uh, the application has been successfully attached instead of the attach button you will get an identify button so you'll click on identify you um, select the particular element uh, and by pressing control key you hit the left mouse button and you hit okay and that element would be the attributes would be available within the application modeler right within the application modeler you'll see a list of attributes and blue prism also suggests which attributes uh, and also selects uh, like you know um, suggests and selects the recommended attributes that can help identify the particular ui element right so if it is going way uh, above the head that's totally fine because we will be going through a lot of exercises in uh, in next few weeks so i'm sure it will make much more sense right because we'll have an a target application we'll be working with and um, then we'll also sort of you know uh, identify the elements and perform operations on them so once you have uh, identified a correct element then you can use a stage such as navigation or read or write or whatever operation you want to perform you select that particular element right drop by dragging and dropping onto it and you select the action that you want to do it and that's it you might have some parameter values that you want to pass on to that action we'll we'll discuss those right so um to summarize object studio has different actions which um, do not exist independently you have to use the process studio to call those actions to execute those actions and then we have the application modeler which directly interacts with the or helps in identification of the elements of target application where operations are performed using the stages we have within the object studio diagrams that includes the navigate stage read stage write stage etc etc right okay so um this is it for this week uh if you haven't checked it out please do check out the blog post because i've discussed the theoretical concepts related to these actions and uh, the application modeler in a pretty good detail over there so that would definitely come handy and um if you have listened to this thing you know like uh, with with your attention i'm sure in subsequent blog posts in subsequent video demos it will be much easier to you know uh, identify the elements and once i walk through the methodology as well right now the main intent is to walk through the application the rpa application itself the different components within it but once we have done that successfully i mean it it certainly comes handy to to do the part development process okay all right i hope it made sense so please do reach out if you have any concerns um let me know through comments through um, on the video or on the blog post uh, the article itself you can also reach out to me at info@proarpa.com at i will try to address as many concerns as i could i we at proarpa Pro actually work very diligently to make sure that you understand the concepts thoroughly and uh, and uh, make the learning experience as interactive and better as possible so thank you very much 
Um, have a good weekend and happy automating. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.